Good. Um, hi, comrades and friends. Um, so, I, as um, Teresa was mentioning, I, like many of the other the comrades, the queer comrades, have been had a hard time this week. Um, so, my talk is possibly a little bit disorient. I mean, uh, disorganized. Um, but you know, I've been tasked with talking about the solidarity. Um, that's been coming coming out since then. I'm sorry, I know I'm moving around a lot. Um, anyways, I want to start by talking about, um, I'm not going to talk, talk a lot about the Sunday protest, but I do want to just note the fact that, you know, Sunday was really a moment that I was reminded how proud I am to be in this party. Um, and, you know, how even with the, you know, immense amount of pain that some of us were feeling. We were able to turn it around and, you know, immediately have a conference call to assess what we should do to get to the, the vigils, um, not just here, but around the country. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really um, proud of us. And, and like Teresa mentioned, you know, being able to intervene, um, you know, to the kind of uh, commentary that was being put out at the vigil um, in New York. Uh, we should also note, um, that you know, after we we actually um, helped organize. There was so the vigil was was at the Stonewall, and we helped organize a march through the streets uh, to Union Square. Um, and we found out later, you know, um, some of us, some of us we, we left after the, after we got to Union Square, and there was another march that was going on that seemed a little bit. Um, more moderate. Um, we found out later that um, the the NYPD actually attacked uh, marchers after we after we had left. So you know, here is all this rhetoric about you know De Blasio. The next day, took the stage or not took the stage, but was at another vigil at Stonewall and you know said said all this all this bullshit. Excuse my language. Of bullshit rhetoric about like you know we are we're going. He literally said we will protect you LGBT community. Um, and here are the cops you know attacking attacking the 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 protesters with horses. And I think four people were arrested. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, OK. Uh, sorry. Oh, and then another thing, just another big up for the party. You know, we also you know, immediately decided we had already planned that we were going to have these press conferences on Tuesday. Uh, to announce our presidential uh, candidacy on Donald Trump's birthday, we immediately turned those around to you know make a focus on Orlando because we knew you know before he even did it, we knew Trump was going to you know just come with this straight up Islamophobia crap. So so we immediately turned around around that as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn to um, some of the solidarity that's been happening. Um, there's been um, there's been vigils all around the world, you know, around around this. Um, some of this I wrote a, a roundup article in this week's paper, um, to sh just showing the sheer number of countries where people have organized vigils. Um, so I won't go into that. Um, but there were you know huge outpourings last night in Orlando, ten thousand in San Francisco. Um, in London, there was a vigil that was led by the mayor of London, the newly elected mayor who's, who is Muslim. Um, in Los Angeles, there were huge demos, majority Latino and Latina demonstration in Houston. Um, so, you know, these things are still continuing to happen. Um, to go back to New York, um, as I mentioned, de Blasio being at this ra this vigil, um, uh, the police chief was also there, Bratton, and he was shouted the hell down, you know, he... he <laughs> yeah. He started to speak and people started yelling, you kill people, <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing here? You know, go away. Um, and, and, you know, and I, and I, I do want to highlight the, the thing about de Blasio because, you know, I think most of, most of us here have marched in Pride in New York and we all know that it's like, you know, you can't leave Pride afterwards because they cage you in like no other parade in New York City. Um, and, and you know, de Blasio saying we will protect you, all that means is there's gonna be more militarization on the streets. There's gonna be more cops. You know, we're already seeing it some, at some in, in the village. Um, so just to be, you know, just to put, it, put everyone on notice about that. And I'll talk more about our contingent um, next weekend at Pride later. Um, okay, and also in terms of international solidarity, um, the FARC, you know, the People's Army, uh, Revolutionary Army in Colombia, put out a statement. Um, they, yeah. um, they said, I'm, I'm going to quote statements here and there. So uh, this statement says, these tragic events should not be an excuse for military intervention or for fundamentalism of any kind. This movement requires a worldwide eradication of homophobia, xenophobia, chauvinism, Islamophobia, hatred in all forms must be stopped. So, 
It was great. Um, also, there's been a lot of, you know, um, gay Muslims speaking out, saying, you know, you can't, you know, just paint, um, you know, Islam as this, like, homophobic, quote-unquote homophobic um, religion. There's plenty of gay folks, you know, who, who are, are there, um, I mean, who, are, who, who, are, who exist and, you know, are challenging this kind of rhetoric. Um, one person, Rylan Brooks, wrote in the Village Voice about the ways that, um, you know the the U.S. and does does precisely that, and how imperialism precisely wages war by talking about how backwards and, and anti-gay these other countries are. Like like you know, there's no oppression here. Um, he said the LG, the American LGBT community, and I, I would say some in the American LGBT community, seems not to have figured out that when we've been that we've been constricted and conscripted into the country's Middle Eastern wars, thanks to the liberation narrative that's clouded LGBT political narratives in the wake of a marriage equality. It did get better, thanks to Uncle Sam, and now it seems we owe him. So when he asks for support for drone strikes in Israel or a blithe military alliance with Israel, he's also sure to remind us of the human rights violations in whatever Muslim state he wants to bomb next. It's called pinkwashing, and it gets liberals to consent to intervention after intervention in the names of queer people. So, you know, I think the thing that's really encouraging about the aftermath of the Orlando is that these things are coming. I mean, this was in the Village Voice. You know, we're, we're seeing more people kind of speaking back to the kind of like pinkwashing rhetoric, to, um, you know, really to Islamophobia and to the equation of, you know, Islam with terrorism and with anti, you know, LGBT um, bigotry. Um, Niha Dawad of the Council on American Islamic Relations said, and I love this quote, he said, homophobia and Islamophobia are interconnected systems of oppression and we cannot dismantle one without dismantling the others. And I think that's so perfect, right? Um, Okay, so then just quickly moving on to labor, um, the AFL-CEO put out a statement, um, black workers put up for justice put out a statement that said, and this is just a small quote of the statement, um, but I thought it was um, very spot on. It said, we must all become hyper vigilant as we have argued before and protect each other with security measures defi designed to defend against a variety of attacks. So they're, you know, reconnecting the black struggle and the black struggle for self-defense to, you know, the ways that, that our, the LGBT community needs to, needs to protect itself as well, right? Um, also, oh shoot, hold on. <laughs> I wanted to read, um, this beautiful, not the whole thing, but this beautiful statement that the Black Lives Matter folks put out. Um, here it is, okay. It's a little bit, I'm gonna read it for a little bit, but it's just, it's wonderful. This is, um, Despite the media's framing of this as a terrorist attack, we are very clear that this terror is completely homegrown, born from the anti-black white supremacy, patriarchy, and homophobia of the conservative right, and of those who would use religious extremism as a weapon to gain power for the few and take power from the rest. Those who seek to profit from our deaths hope we will forget who our real enemy is and blame Muslim communities instead, but we will never forget. Homegrown terror is the product of a long history of colonialism, including state and vigilante violence. It is the product of white supremacy and capitalism, which deforms, deforms the spirit and fuels interpersonal violence. We especially hold space for our Lat Latinx family now. From the forced migration of thousands of young people from the island of Puerto Rico to, or to Orlando, to the deadly forced migration through Latin America and the Caribbean, we know this is not the first time in history our families have been mowed down with malice, and we stand with you. Um, okay, so then it continues. We will fight for you. We will not allow a false neg narrative of Islamic terrorism to be dictated by white supremacists and corporate media. We know it was bullets and bigotry that killed you. We remain committed to the internal work of building revolutionary love and resilience. We are lit from within by this love. Um, we need a world that realizes that the, world the word terrorist is not synonymous with Muslim any more than criminal is synonymous with black. The enemy is now and has always been the four threats of white supremacy, patriarchy, capitalism, and militarism. These forces and not Islam create terrorism. These forces and not queerness create homophobia. Until these systems are defeated, until anti-blackness no longer fuels anti-Muslim and anti-queer and trans bigotry, exploitation, and exclusion, we can never 
be truly free. And it ends, but we believe that we will win. So. And I think this is, this is a very, very long statement. And, and what I think is also important to know is that it's, tra it's also in Spanish as well. So it's directly to the, the communities as well, you know, um, which is something that um, we haven't seen in a lot of statements. Um, okay. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, also, there, there was an article that came out highlighting um, kind of the solidarity coming from the Orlando's black community. Um, there's an event called, uh, organized by a black man called Big Boy Pride, which is um, an event for black gay men of size. Um, and it's upcoming, and uh, he, uh, the, the organizer, you know, kind of was quoted saying that he's, he's not, excuse me, um, Orlando hasn't deterred him from having his event that's coming up. Um, and I just want to, to kind of flag that. Um, you know, there's, I'm, um, I'm teaching at the Grad Center over the summer, and there's a young um, Dominican genderqueer person who's in my class. And um, we were talking about the topic for today was, utop just part of what we were talking about today was utopias. And, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to try to hold it together. Um, they said that, you know, they were, we were talking about, like, well, is utopia possible? Is this that? And they raised their hand and they said, you know, they felt like utopia is, is built in resistance. And I said, well, can you give me an example of that? And they said, you know, when I go to, to the clubs and, um, you know, I'm able, you know, and there's, there's no, um, sorry. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> 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 So anyway, so they said when, you know, when they go to clubs and, and, and it's a space and, and everyone's there, you know, from all different races and anyone could be any gender they want to be and anyone could be with anyone they want and, you know, that was their version of utopia and, and they said it was, and they, and, they, and they specifically said that those clubs were built from, the re, from resisting, you know, from, from the resistance of the kind of systems of oppression that we had to deal with in our daily lives, right? Um, so I just want to say that, you know, going to a club has become an act of resistance. You know what I'm saying? Going to a bar has become an act of resistance. Um, anyways, the, um, the guy from the Big Boy Pride, he, he, who was hoarding the event, he, he said, um, he said, quote, now is not the time to hide and let people know we are not going anywhere. Now is the time to stand up as opposed to hiding. Um, and you know, I want to I want to use that to segue into um, Pride, um, which is happening in not this weekend but the weekend after. And 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 you know, if there was ever a time that we needed to be at Pride, this is it right now. Um, um, God, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, you know, there's already this, this backlash that's happening. Um, thank you. Um, two Baptist ministers in Sacramento and Arizona are calling for anti-LGBT acts in, re in response to Orlando. There's a Baptist church in Orlando that has called for a demo against the victims of the massacre. Um, and, you know, I just want to say, you know, I was at, I was at Brooklyn Pride on Saturday before, and I did go dancing before I woke up on Sunday to, to the situation. Um, and, you know, it wasn't Muslims who were there with their big signs. It was the Christian fucking right, excuse my language, but it was the Christian right holding these big signs, you know, protesting Brooklyn Pride, you know. Um, so anyways, it's just, it's just really important that we get out there and that we, you know, say what's what and really, you know, talk about the ways capitalism creates all these situations, you know, the, the Islamophobia, the racism, the anti-LGBTQ bigotry. Um, we have to be there and we have to fight. And um, yeah, so I just, I just want to really encourage everyone to, um, to be there on Sunday. Um, and let's continue the struggle and long live the Pulse Martyrs. Thank you.